Hello, basic bakers, and welcome back to the cookie chat. I am Chelsea with Rolling in the Dough AZ, and my co host, Miss Melissa, over at Missy P Sweets, is momming hard this summer. So she is doing all the wonderful camps. You might see her a little bit later pop in, but for the time being, it's going to be me. And I am joined today by the wonderful Amy. Hello, Miss Amy. Hello, hello. She is our, I'm going to deem you like the expert of all experts of cookie con because <laughs> as you guys will see, her resume is extensive. It is detailed. I'm excited to pick your brain. So we are going back to our cookie con days, you guys. We are loving hearing that Gabby's episode helped everyone who was a newbie kind of coming in and Miss Amy is an expert in all areas of this. So hopefully it will offer a new perspective, answer some questions that you guys had sent in, and we can give you all the knowledge in preparation for Orlando, which is right around the corner. I cannot believe August is knocking on our door. I have so much work to do. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> all right. So Miss Amy, Give us a little bit of background. Tell us about your business. Tell us how you got started, all of that fun stuff. Okay. Um, I decorated my first cookies back in, officially back in uh, um, and, you know, like many of us cookiers, once you've decorated that very first one, it's like you are hooked um, and you just kind of pour through every website you can find. Instagram feed, everything that is all about cookies. And um, so a friend of mine from school, because I used to teach, I was the seventh grade teacher for 15 years. Um, I taught mm. science. Um, one of my school friends had suggested the, the cookie name of Cloud Nine Cookies, since my last name is Cloud. So a little, little spin on the spelling of my last name with an apostrophe D and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, and it's funny talking about that cookie name. It was leading up to the very first cookie con when we needed to, you know, have a cookie name kind of thing. And oh. my business started off, you know, with selling a few cookies here and there. Um, and then um, we looked into what the cottage law was in Maryland. There, there wasn't one at that point. Um, and so for me to legally sell, I needed to work from a commercial kitchen there wasn't one in a very rural area. Um, so we built one in my backyard. <laughs> oh my gosh, no way. See behind me. It's a very small space. It's my it's a studio really, but it is to um to commercial standards as far as my local health department. In fact, I had my yearly visit the week before Ohio Cookie Con. Yeah, that was fun. of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. Um and uh so this is it's about 30 feet or so from my back door. And it's, it's been a fantastic adventure with, with doing cookies out here. So I don't do orders anymore. Um, I stopped mm -hmm. taking orders a little over a year ago. Um, I mentioned two years at this point, I just focus on classes. I do local classes um, and cookie con classes. So that's, that's where I'm at at this point. I love that. That is, I think you're the first person we've heard that built their own commercial kitchen. So that is amazing. I'm in awe. Do you, <laughs> do you like having the separation between like home and business or does it not feel like that separation? Um, the separation was critical for my marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, it was critical for my kids, um, because I've been out here now for 10 years. Um, I put in my resignation for my school teaching position, um, in 2013. So, having my kids be able to be inside, I could still hear them. I had little baby monitors set up and all, so I could hear them and stuff. Yeah. Um, but having no pitter patter of feet running through the kitchen as I'm trying to pipe and nobody trying to swipe cookies as they're running past. No, it was just, it was nice having that separation. Um, mind you, there's still a lot of cookie stuff in the house. My printer is in the house. My, many of my boxes are in the house, um, mm -hmm. but, else is out here. So I love up. that. It's also really unique in this journey. We have seen so many teachers become cookiers. Like it is one of the prominent occupations that have adjusted over into our world. So I love that you kind of represent both of those. 
Yes. And when I started doing the cookie classes on the regular, it was truly a meld of those two worlds because I loved mm -hmm. school teaching. I, I did. There's just so many aspects about it that I'm like, eh. and I kind of loved cookies a little bit more. So being able now to kind of meld the teaching world with my cookie world and actually be able to teach people who want to be in my classroom <laughs> and yes. pay to my classroom. It's pretty awesome. I do love that. It's like marrying of the both passions. So perfect. Well, you know what? Then that leads us perfectly into the journey of CookieCon because not only has Miss Amy been an attendee of, correct me if I'm wrong, every single CookieCon. Every single CookieCon, yes. Oh my gosh. As well as a core teacher, an add-on teacher, a keynote speaker. So as we said in the beginning, your resume is beyond extensive. Walk us through that journey of how did you discover CookieCon back in the day, CookieCon being a little bit different than what it is now? What did that advertisement even look like in the beginning? <laughs> oh, it's it's funny that you say the an, an advertisement. Um, back, 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 back in the day, um, before Mike and Karen, we know them as Mike and Karen Summers of CookieCon, mm -hmm. um, Karen had an online shop called Karen's Cookies. And so you could buy some of your supplies from her. Um, she had a blog where she did some decorating and she did some YouTube kinds of videos and they had a forum that I'm dating myself here. It was a forum where it was like a little chat page. Yes. You know, I remember like, this. Like it was just, and I happened to be just pouring through anything I could find about cookies. And mm -hmm. I stumbled on of this convention it was just kind of talked about in the forum and um it hadn't it hadn't happened yet and the tickets hadn't gone on sale but i um i had read about it and i was like oh my god there's a convention about cookies <laughs> and um i went out and i said something to my husband about the cookie convention and uh he was like well you're going aren't you and i'm like oh it's in <laughs> like I, you know, I'm just, I'm in Maryland, so that's yeah. a haul, having to take out leave from school and everything. So when you say advertisement, it was just this little byline in this forum, this this text chain, yeah. basically, and uh, bought the tickets. There were only 200 tickets sold for that first one. Um, yeah. And it just, it was an incredible event. And so going home from that event, knowing that, okay, well, if they ever have another one, I have to go back. And if they ever have another one, I have to go back and back. <laughs> and, and, and here we are. What is this? 12 now? We come in. Oh my gosh. 12 will be Orlando. So yeah. Wow. Um, with it being 200 people, where was the first one located? Do you remember? The first one was in Salt Lake City. Um, okay. There, the four were in Salt Lake City. Hmm. Yes. Um, and the very, very first hotel was a little tiny hotel. Um, it, it, but the magic, what's funny is the magic of the, the cookie con that we know nowadays was there. Then. So it, that fortunately has, has developed over time. And it's just that there's no other way to describe it other than magical. So I think I lost that. I love that. Um, can you see me? Okay. I can see you. Yes. Yep. You're there. Okay. You're gotcha. good. Sorry. Bless you for a second. You're there. fine. No, okay. it's okay. Um, and then go ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. The, Finish up. Um, to all for the first four rather were in Salt Lake City. They did have to mm -hmm. switch hotels because they went to a bigger attendee group. Um, then they went to Indianapolis, and then they went to Reno, mm -hmm. and then they went to Louisville. And then COVID hit. Literally a week later from Louisville, the world shut down. So we were extremely lucky that we got in at that mm -hmm. time. Um, then it was Orlando, Dallas, Reno again, and mm -hmm. it's been an adventure. It's taken me all over the United States. It's awesome. <laughs> that has. Wow. I didn't realize it started and I guess when I joined the cookie world cookie con just kept changing cities every um event so I didn't know it started and stayed locally in Salt Lake for one so or for four I should say so that's amazing yeah. Mike and Karen live in Idaho so it's an easy drive for them to be able to 
attach a trailer to a vehicle and just bring everything that they needed for the organizers to the event. Because as I definitely know, shipping things and having to arrange travel to go to all the cookie cons and bring everything with you, um, it is it is no joke. It is it's hard. It is yes. hard and <laughs> we have heard this from so many people that – being able to drive makes all the difference. Yes. So completely makes sense why they would choose Salt Lake. All right. So go ahead and kind of paint us a picture on what CookieCon looked like prior to what CookieCon looks like today. Were there the add-on classes? Were there tracks? Were there um, keynote speakers? What is that kind of looking like? Uh, the very first CookieCon looks – Similar, but yet different from the ones that we know from here on out. The biggest change um, is that there were no tracks in that very first cookie con. The track being the group of people that you move from class to classroom with. Um, the very first cookie con, we were in a big ballroom, these big round banquet tables. And once you claim that table, that kind of was yours. And the speakers came in and out. So they moved. Mm -hmm. We stayed put. Um, I'm kind of glad that they went away from that because it gave the students a time to get up and move and run to the restroom and get a snack. And, and it allows uh, the presenters, the core instructors nowadays to kind of set up their tables and, and what they're demonstrating and what they're talking about and not have to clean up and move themselves. So that, that's the biggest change. Um, there were no add-on classes. There were no electives. We had a swag bag, and it's funny because I, I found one of the old pictures of the swag bag. In the swag bag, there was a, a bottle of Nielsen Massey vanilla that because they were a sponsor. Wow. A bottle of vanilla. You're like, this is gold now. <laughs> it's gold now, exactly. Um, the vendors, um, mm -hmm. there were two, and you really didn't buy anything from them. Uh, BRP, BRP has been around since the very beginning. Um, mm -hmm. They had a, a little table set up and Julia Usher was there with her books and with some of her cookies. And I think you could buy a book from her there and she would autograph it for you. But that was the vendors. <laughs> that, wow. That yeah. Um, it, you could have ordered some things from Mike and Karen ahead of time and they would bring it to CookieCon with them. You could just pick it up. So you didn't have to worry about shipping of things. And it was just, a, it was a different experience, but the magic of being around the people that spoke the same language as you and, and understood the, the not getting enough sleep and what happens when my icing ran and bled and all that kind of stuff. These people knew your story and mm -hmm. um, it was just, it was wild. It was just wild. I love that connection of magic. It is. It's that yes. camaraderie that kind of – you belong to a group because cooking yes. can be so lonely. So yes. that's amazing. Do you remember your first cookie friend at CookieCon? I – the – there were a group of ladies that kind of got together at BWI um, mm -hmm. and flew out together. We had never met each other, but they were also within this forum. And so we kind of met up at the airport and flew together, and we kind of hung out there. Um, my first roommate was a girl that I just, Hey, who wants to, sh who wants to share a room? And she lives in Texas. Um, uh -huh. and so we're, we're still Facebook friends and stuff now. She doesn't do cookies as much anymore, but you know, the whole idea of rooming with a, ra a random person, it didn't yeah. phase me at all because it's a cookie person. Of course, they're going to be fine. They're not going to be a serial <laughs> killer kind of. <laughs> You're like, you are so. vetted in our community. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, it was just my first cookie friends were probably just people from, from the Baltimore area. So, I love yeah. that. Do you remember any of the speakers or the instructors that were in attendance? Oh, yeah. The, um, the very first presenters, I think there was about 10 of them. Many of them you know nowadays. Sweet Sugar Bell was there. She, that, she was like the one that I was like, oh my gosh, I have to go meet her kind of thing. Um, there was Julia Usher spoke, um, mm -hmm. Marianne Rollins. Uh, she did a lot on, were you familiar with Flickr? I wasn't. I wasn't. Okay. It was old school kind of photo sharing. Oh, yes, bit. yes, yes. Okay. Flickr, yeah. 
So the, some of them came from that era. Um, so Marianne Rollins, she was the uh, cookie artisan. She talked about platters. Mm -hmm. um, Pam Sneed, um, she did a glaze stuff, um, her presentation. Um, Lisa Snyder, that's the barefoot baker. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, Allison Stinnett, that's um, Allie B's Bake Shop. Um, Gloria or Glory Albin, Glorious Treats. So see a lot of these, they're not around anywhere. Oh, Liz Adams was there. Liz was, she's one of the other ones that's been to every single one. Um, am I missing? I know I'm missing a couple, but they're, they're some of the big ones that came to mind. I love that. Um, okay, so as CookieCon progresses, what are some things that you have absolutely loved? And we talked about the tracks changing. What is something that you love about the progression and the growth of CookieCon and that has kind of led us to where we are now? Um, I love how much the community has grown. Um, there are so many more people that speak our language, um, that know the struggle. <laughs> um, there's so many more shops that have what we want and what we need more things to drain our bank accounts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it's just that, that magic is, is still there. And, and just being able to look at all the different avenues in which the cookies can affect our lives. So I mean, back in the day, it was, you made cookies either because you love doing that, you know, for your family, you may have sold some, well, now we have all of these classes and now we have all these books and we have all of these podcasts. We have all of these, you know, different um, aspects, different uh, facets of cookies that don't actually deal with the butter and the sugar anymore, but they're still impacting the cookie, the cookie community immensely. So it's really cool that it's gone beyond the mixer. It's gone beyond those basic ingredients. Um, and it's still for the love of what decorated cookies are all about. So it's pretty. I love that. And whoever is listening, grab that name beyond the, the mixer. mixer. I coined it. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. Yes. yes. No, no totally. totally. It's, it's yours. yours. Okay. So since you have experienced Every part of Cookie Con, the highs, the lows, the good, the bad, the travel. Can you share any pro tips with us as far as attending Cookie Con, tips for attending, packing, anything that's like in your secret arsenal of been there, done that? I wish I knew this back then um, for our attendees. Um, so the, the biggest thing, the biggest piece of recommendation that I can give is to read the pages online, read through the cookie con website. There is so much information, um, that is there. Um, I could only say for somebody who hasn't been to cookie con and is kind of not familiar with it, that it would be overwhelming. It would be daunting, but maybe go through page by page, make your own notes. From it, mm -hmm. I'm, I was one of those geeks from from college where I would take notes in class and then I would go back to my room and I would recopy those notes and organize them so I understood them. Do that with the CookieCon website. You're not a geek. I did I did that too, and then I color coordinated them. <laughs> I color coordinate. See, yes, that's awesome. I tab that's them and then I'd be like, oh, there's a clip art picture that will help me remember. Th yeah, you're not alone. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, I would suggest people to just go through that website pour through it, make notes, kind of organize what their schedule and stuff is, um, make a, a side note of all the different activities that they can do. Um, second thing is to do as much as you can. Um, it is like Disney World though, or Disneyland, you're not going to get through everything on the one day or, or even the one trip. Mm -hmm. It is a lot. So make some choices if you have to say, okay, I'm really not interested in this particular elective, but I like this elective, so I'm gonna try this one. Like, you do have to make some choices with that. Um, what else? Save your money to try to afford everything. Um, mm -hmm. 
along those lines, you don't have to eat at all the hotel restaurants and things. I never eat breakfast in the hotel. I, mm-hmm. I bring my own little egg sandwich maker, like the little Hamilton Beach oh egg sandwich gosh, maker. Oh my gosh, yes. I pack it and it goes with me. So um, as long as the hotel has got a refrigerator, I can throw my eggs in there, my little English muffins in there. I make my own lunches at Cookie Con, mostly, mostly because I don't have time like to actually <laughs> yes. sit down and eat with someone. Um, but um, you can save so much money by doing some of your own meal prep and, and eat either in your room or make your thing and then just go and find other people to go and sit with. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you definitely, that. you definitely have to save money in, in those regards. The other final thing that I'll say is make sure you give yourself a buffer day when you are done with cookie con and you've come home before you have to start real life. <laughs> the burnout day. Uh, the, the cookie con hangover is mm-hmm. a real thing. Um, it usually takes me a good three or four days to kind of just regroup and unpack and clean and, because I'll, I'll bring him all my tools and stuff from classes, and it's it's a lot. Mm. It is a lot. So, what is a swag bag material? Since you've seen them all, that you highly recommend people bringing or looking into, or maybe even bringing back if there's something that's kind of gone to the wayside. Um, well, the swag bags that or not swag. Bag. I'm sorry, the trades. Oh. I apologize. Oh, okay. my lingo. <laughs> Because I can talk about the swag bags, too. Um, oh, either one. Okay. I'll, I'll go ahead and start with the swag bags. The swag okay. bags that Mike and Karen um, provide each of the the attendees at registration um, are loaded full of stuff. Um, you have mm-hmm. a big booklet that has the schedule and everything for the event. Um, it has lots of advertisements and sometimes coupon codes in the back. Um, there's all kinds of other things inside of those bags from cutters to stencils sometimes there's food coloring there's flavorings it all depends upon who are the sponsors um, for that particular event Um, but they're always very well stocked we'll put it that way and and sometimes though the swag bags might differ differ from person to person like they Mm -hmm. might run out of one particular cookie cutter but they'll substitute a different cookie cutter in with it so it's kind of fun to even like mix and match with your friends and say, oh, I got this one. You Would you rather have this one and kind of trade things out um, oh, within nice. those swag bags? Yeah. Um, the trade thing, the trade thing is a new kind of concept. It, it started probably, Louisville is when it was really starting to get going. Um, people were trading buttons, like mm-hmm. the little buttons with the little pin backs and stuff on them. And uh, you would have basically like a Girl Scout sash that had all of these buttons down it or or all over your lanyard or all over your um, whatever bag you wanted to carry. And um, then they kind of transitioned into trades and they're completely an optional thing. This is not Mm -hmm. something that Mike and Karen started. This was just people started to, oh, well, I want to give these things away. I'm going to give these things away. And um, they are a nice icebreaker um, because so many cookie ears are really truly introverts they Mm -hmm. don't know how to go up and talk to people because normally it's they're at home and they have their children that they talk to or the cookies that they talk to Um, to or we talk to our phones and pretend that there's people listening yeah yeah exactly so to have these actual in-person conversations can get weird um and so having a little icebreaker whether it be a piece of candy whether it be a cookie that they brought from home or a, a sticker that's cookie related it's kind of like a, hey, look at what I made. Would you like to have one? And it's it's nice to kind of break that ice. Um, and I've gotten so many really great ones over the years from different spoons and pipettes and um, stickers. I love the stickers because some of them get kind of snarky and stuff. And that's, that's <laughs> yes. just fun. <laughs> Jewelry things, little bracelets and earrings. and But once again, they're completely optional. Um, mm-hmm. If somebody wanted to even hand out like a lifesaver mint, you you never turn down a mint. (laughs) You just don't. (laughs) And if they had on there um, what their business name was or even made the little stickers of the um, a QR code for their Instagram or for their website so that we can kind of collect them and scan them and say, oh, oh, wow, this person is from Australia with, oh, this person is from somebody right down the street and I didn't know that they were there. 
it, it's kind of a neat way to make connections with people going beyond the actual event. I love that. When traveling with all of those goodies to and from, do you have any recommendations as far as packing tips? Or we've heard some people say like bring an extra suitcase. Some people have little hacks where they can use one. What is your take on that? Um, be careful what you put in your um, your carry-on because mm -hmm. sometimes fondant that is not dry gets flagged and then you, you have to oh. throw it out because it's like a gel or not a gel, but like a paste kind of. You know I, I mean? never really, yeah, I never yes. would have thought of that. That's amazing. Yeah. So sometimes fondant gets flagged. Um, sometimes the dust get flagged. So mm -hmm. scribes, you can't, you shouldn't bring scribes <laughs> on your carry on. Yeah. That, yep. Yeah. You, you really have to be thoughtful about what you're trying to bring when the, the, uh, plane with you in the carry-ons. Um, but you can totally bring your cookies with you in something that's going to fit underneath the seat in front of you. Um, mm -hmm. It can be like your personal item kind of thing. Just make sure everything is all packaged and stuff. Um, I, If I have to fly, I will normally get one of those collapsible uh, duffel bags Mm -hmm. that I'll throw into my suitcase and then that's where all of my dirty laundry goes or things that I don't want to get, that I don't care get broken in that bag and then that's my second checked bag um mm. but all of my good stuff is going to get nice and packaged in the hard-sided suitcases that get checked so I love that the whole um putting an empty suitcase inside of your bigger suitcase that's yeah. definitely a way to go um bring Tupperware with you bring bubble wrap with you so you can kind of package your, your cookies or your trades, whatever you have safely so that they can make it home in one piece. Yeah. I love that. I would never have thought to bring bubble wrap. Now I'm like, I'm wrapping my makeup in bubble wrap and then reusing it for whatever I might need. That is a smart tip. I would never think that. So amazing also, to know. Think about this. Um, if you order a cookie con t-shirt ahead of time, that uh -huh. can be one of your pieces of clothing. So you don't have to pack a shirt for a particular day. There are so many of the t-shirt vendors that come now, you can say like, mm -hmm. well, I'll only pack three shirts because that means I'll have to buy five more. <laughs> they would love this advertisement, by the way. They're like, yes, come stop by our booth. I love that. Yeah. See, it's all about how you spin it. <laughs> It is. It is. And I love to hear that you can do it on a budget, especially when you're sharing the food tips. Yes. Um, I do feel like food sometimes, we like our comfort, you know, and when you're well oh, fed, yeah. it just, it makes the day go. Well, and it's it's not just the, the cost savings, but it's the mm -hmm. time savings because mm -hmm. everybody gets on the, the core teaching day. So it'll be the Friday in Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, everybody gets released at one time to have lunch. Well, you're going to have a ton of people descending on the restaurant area in Orlando all at one time. It can take more time than what you really think to, to get the food that you want. I will say this, the hotel in Orlando and the mm -hmm. food choices in Orlando are, there's a Mexican place that has margaritas that are like this big. Um, <laughs> they have, yeah. I love I, that. I, I know, know from experience. Um, and uh, they have table side guac and they have great room service. And yeah, the, the food stuff that's in Orlando is is very, very good. Very if y'all want to catch Amy, buy a margarita and some guac. You <laughs> guys it has to be back. after after I teach. <laughs> it yes. can't be during. There's no time. Well, that is a perfect movement into your next part of the journey. So you kind of went from an attendee. So real yes. quick, how many did you attend as just an attendee? Um. At the start, three. Okay. So all Salt Lake, right? All Salt Lake, yes. Okay. So for anybody who is interested, there's so many avenues that you can take to really immerse yourself into the cookie con world. Where did you first start? Where did you go from an attendee to really working with Mike and Karen at cookie con? Um, they had contacted me prior to the fourth cookie con to ask to see if I wanted to be a core instructor. Mm -hmm. So the core instructors are the um, six or seven people that everyone has the opportunity to see. That's what the, the core class day is that 
it's about a 45 minute class or so and then you you go through it about seven or eight times um, so my core class was in 2017 um, and it was all about textures um, because mm. textures are not a new thing they've been around for a long time um, and so my class was chock full of just different ways that you can create textures on your cookies um, and with me coming out of the classroom the, the science teacher classroom being able to teach the same lesson you know six seven times it was <laughs> it, it was easy for me to do um and i loved it so that was my core instructor year i love that it's like familiar territory for you yes yes so the core classes are the ones that are going to come with your cookie con ticket correct yes okay yes how and they're, they're like a lecture style class typically okay. So not typically or not traditionally, you're hands on, you're kind of making things along. It's really just sitting in, taking your notes, soaking in all the information that's being given. Correct. Awesome. D how long did you stay a core instructor? I was a core instructor for just that one year. Um, mm -hmm. They've only had, let's see, Artie was a core multiple times. Lisa Snyder has been a core multiple times. Um, I think that's about it as far as the repeating of cores. Um, there are so many cookiers out there. So being able to select different people based upon what their expertise is, um, is has been a great thing. Um, especially with the, the growth of the sales part of cookies. Mm -hmm. um, that That's one of the things definitely that has changed over the time is, is there's so much emphasis put on, well, how do you make the money? How do you make your coins with, with cookies? It didn't mm -hmm. used to be that way, but now it is. Did, do you know now, do you have to apply to be a core instructor or is it still by invite only? Honestly, I don't know. Um, okay. I, I think that it's by invitation. Um, mm -hmm. You can apply to be an add-on instructor. I, I still have to apply, even though I've taught many times, I still apply every time. Um, and I know there'll be one time, I'm knocking on wood, that it's a long time from now, that they're like, nope, we're, we're going to let somebody else do it this time. Um, you have to apply to be a purple apron. A purple apron is kind of their helpers, and they do oh, wear okay. a purple apron, so you can kind of recognize them in the crowd. Um, you have to apply to be an elective teacher. Um, yeah, yeah, there's the application process is is pretty extensive for all of them. So as you mentioned, you have to still apply to be the add-on instructor. Yes. In our last episode, we had spoke with Gabby about taking those add-on classes. So how did you transition from a core instructor to an add-on instructor? The add-ons really started to get going um, in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking, well, gosh, I would love to, to go into this avenue of cookie con because um, as an attendee it's it's great and stuff but they were opening up opening up all these other opportunities and I'm like that sounds like fun I'm gonna be coming anyway because yeah. so let's try something new um, and so I applied and uh, my first one was in Reno um, as an add-on instructor um, and that was a very very good learning experience for mm. so many of us um, that were add-on instructors because it it was a new a new thing. Um, planning for the classes, how do we get all of our stuff there? How is the hotel going to work for us and with us? Um, it, it's a big, big undertaking. Um, but obviously, I like doing it because I've done it a bunch of times now. <laughs> Can you kind of elaborate on that for those of us who – haven't attended or even those that attend sometimes I know Melissa and I are a little bit privy to behind the scenes information with instructors and seeing their journey mm -hmm. but to the lay person what does that kind of look like as an add-on instructor your there's a lot of back-end prep yes um the I'll give you an example the classes mm -hmm. that are coming up here in Orlando um I had to have them completed um, completed as far as the designs go um, and submitted picture wise by October 1st of this last year. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. They, since I was teaching both 
in Ohio mm -hmm. and in Orlando, they wanted everything for 2023 to be submitted by October 1st. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I am, I think about, I had a, a month's time to design those classes, figure them out, get them photographed and submitted. Um, but since then, the prep continues on. Like I print cookie cutters for my students, um, contacting sponsors, um, going through and creating my PowerPoint, any kind of printables or, or online documents that they're going to have. And then it's, you know, the lesson plan that how am I going to get through all of these cookies, what step goes where, so on and so forth. So that's all just some of the back end. Then you have all the transportation and the packing of things because as an add-on instructor, you bring everything with you, all of your audiovisual, all of your cookies that you're making, all the cookies for the, your students, the hundreds of pounds of icing. I laugh only because I'm like, oh gosh, the icing stories we've heard. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I've always shipped my icing or I carried it with me. I, I don't make it on site. I always make it ahead of time. Um, but any of your tools that you're using in the class all come with you. And they're mm -hmm. all out of our, our expenses. You know, we have to pay for the transportation, um, the hotel. If we buy an, an, a cookie con ticket, that's on us too. Um, so it is, it is a big financial undertaking for the add-on instructors to, to conduct our classes. Oh, and we have to rent the room too, the actual classroom. Oh, yes. In. Yeah, that's all part of it too. So, you know, when you're seeing the price points of $200, $300 for a class, it's not just for the content that is there, but there is a lot of other expenses that go into that. I love that you explained that because I feel I can personally say prior to having the knowledge that I do now, I would kind of question that, like, why, how is this class $300? How is this? But then as I grew in the cookie world and learned that, I was like, oh, that makes so much more sense. I cannot imagine the price to ship that many cookies across the country mm -hmm. and pray they stay together or oh, yeah. people that are, like you said, shipping their frosting. We know some people bring mixers along and, mm -hmm. or have shipped those. So having that, I was like, wow, this is so much more than I ever thought it was. So I love having that information. If you didn't know that information, let us know. Or if you have any questions about this for Amy, you can drop them down below or send it to us on Instagram. I think this part of the journey is fascinating because it's not something that we see in front of us all of the time. So with all that prep, this is – also, you guys are almost separate from CookieCon in the sense that you do it all yourself, renting the room. You said your visual and audio. How the, do you... the, rent, the renting of the room, like it's part of our contract, like Mike yes. and Karen. So they, they kind of work out that agreement with the hotel. And so once Mike and Karen collect the student fees for us, mm -hmm. um, they take care of paying the hotel for us um, and then they'll cut us a check as far as what the, the leftover and stuff is. Yeah. How can you manage to do two to four add-on classes by yourself with that much material? What does that day kind of look like for you? Because I'm, I'm in awe of a simple local cookie class. I'm like, man, I'm white after a three-hour class. Give it to us. Tell us what your day is. It's a lot of coffee. <laughs> Oh, hey. a lot of coffee <laughs> there you go yeah um but in all sincerity it is it is a, so much work um mm -hmm. sleep is sometimes you don't sleep in between the 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 night class day is happening one day and then you have to prep for the next day classes so sometimes you don't get to sleep that night um and when you say by yourself I've been fortunate that I've had some assistance over the years. Um, my husband's been able to come to, what, three? Yes, I'm looking over to him. Three <laughs> cookie cons with me now. Um, and so he's been my assistant. Um, 
notice I'm using the air quotations there. Um, I love that. Meaning that he gets me the coffee. Um, he will haul things, but as far as icing goes and mixing colors and, and bagging icing, he doesn't know that. <laughs> I end up doing that. Um, I've had other assistants over the years that help with flipping of the rooms because you get mm -hmm. a four hour class and then you have a two hour break for lunch and then to reset the classroom for the afternoon class. So it has to be completely cleaned up, stripped down, and then all reset. So that is the most stressful part is that two hour break in between the morning and afternoon sessions. Um, you try to, to prep as much stuff ahead of time as you can. Um, and you, you come up with some little tricks and things along the way to, that, that help to ease the transition of, of the classes and, and just lots of lists. Okay, for this student, I need this, 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 and this. And for this mm -hmm. class, I need this, this. Yeah, because it's, it's exhausting. It is absolutely exhausting, but I love it. I'm a glutton <laughs> for punishment. <laughs> you guys, if you see any of your add-on instructors, give them a little bit of grace on it. If they might not stop to talk, they could just be like, I have 20 minutes to eat. And as Amy says, refill your coffee. So Amy, what is your coffee order? If somebody brings you a coffee at Cookie Con, what, what do you take? Oh, I'm easy. It's just cream and sugar or cream and, and Splenda. I also like Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi. I am not particular. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you guys make sure to thank your add on instructors and man, buy them a drink because like we, we've learned margaritas, Coke, Pepsi, coffee, they are putting in so much to be here for you guys. All right. So you went from add on mm -hmm. to Reno, correct? You were a keynote speaker. Yes, the second Reno, I was a keynote speaker, and I was an add-on instructor for that. That oh my god, cookie con too. Yeah, you're doing it all. I did. <laughs> okay, how did that adjustment? I feel like you're like leaping. Oh, as I'm hitting this, leaping from stone to stone. How did you become? What is a keynote speaker, and how did you get there? Um, the keynote speaker is kind of like the the introduction um, speech to mm -hmm. that year year's cookie con. Um, and it usually happens on Thursday evening, um, or like the first official day of CookieCon. Um, all the add-on classes happen the day or two prior to that first day. Um, and so we all get together in a big ballroom and Mike and Karen introduce themselves and they introduce who the core instructors are, kind of do some housekeeping things. And then they'll have somebody that gives a speech and it gives a speech about who they are or you know, what cookies mean to them and those kinds of things. And I had the distinct honor of being the the 10th person to do that, the 10th anniversary Aww. of being the keynote speaker. And it was, it was really cool because I've been with Mike and Karen since the very beginning, as we've talked about. So, and I've, I connected with them then and every single time I, I connect with them even more. And so for them to ask me, Hey, do you want to do this? And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'd love to. <laughs> I have so, goosebumps. I yeah, love that was, type of stuff. It was it was pretty special. It was de it's definitely a highlight of my my cookie career of my adult life. Like it's it's really important to me. So mm -hmm. um, it was an absolute honor to be able to to speak in front of almost a thousand people. So. Oh my gosh! Do you have to apply for that as well? Oh no, they they handpick that person. Okay, those are handpicked. Yes. What tips do you have for anybody who wants to start becoming an instructor, whether that be a core, an add-on, a keynote speaker, any of that? What is your advice for any newbie? Um, after this cookie con, um, start to peruse the cookie con website. Um and also, if you're an attendee, you'll be then in the attendee Facebook group. Keep your eye out for posts about, hey, are you interested in applying to do this, this, and this? And then actually apply. Um, mm -hmm. And with the application process, like, if you are thinking of being an add-on instructor, like, you need to have taught in the past. Like, you need to mm -hmm. kind of understand what is involved with teaching a cookie decorating class. Um and that goes for whether you're an adult instructor or you're an electives teacher. The electives, there are there are still instructors, but it's on a much smaller scale. It's like 45 minutes. Um, 
And then you're doing that like eight or nine times kind of thing. But you still need to be extremely organized. You need to be well-versed in what your craft is. Um, and you need to want to put in the work. You you need to be able to do that. So, and, and along those lines too, about knowing your craft, as we know, decorated cookies, especially rural icing, is extremely finicky as far as environment goes. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the big things that not everybody realizes is that here, me being in Maryland, it is swampy right now. It's probably about 75 to 80% humidity. And that is not the humidity that you are experiencing right now. So yep. my, my icing here is going to act very differently in your environment and your icing would act differently here. So the instructors kind of need to be able to plan for the environmental conditions um, and be able to, um, to work on their feet to be able to, to handle those differences. So you got to be flexible. Yeah. Oh, that, we have a summer monsoon season, like our storm. And man, when that hits in the humidity, I'm in a dry environment. And I always am like, I don't know how any of you guys handle this because I mean, my base layer is almost drying as I'm piping it mm -hmm. here. So that is a great tip to keep in mind. Yeah. And it's not just the icing. It's if you're painting as well. Like mm. I went to Reno the first time and I tried to paint with gels and vodka and I'm like, this doesn't work. It just seizes. And I, and it, yeah, I ended up having to paint with water and I couldn't paint with water here in Maryland because it would just pit and it would never dry. Mm -hmm. So understanding and learning those those differences of, of environment along the way, you have to keep those in mind if you're going to be teaching a class of people who've paid good money to yeah. learn from you. Yeah, certainly. Do you think it's smarter for someone to start as an elective or a core instructor before making the leap into add-on or can you just hit the ground running? What is your expertise? Um, I would suggest that somebody starts as an attendee. They need mm -hmm. to come in and they need to understand what the situation is um, and fall in love with the event, to be honest, mm -hmm. um, and experience well, what does an elective look like uh, from a student's perspective? What does an add-on class look like from a student's perspective? And then make the judgment call from there. Um, I honestly, I don't think I'd want to be an elective teacher just because it, it it would be too fast for me. Like I like to, even though my four hour classes are extremely fast paced, mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't want that change over every 45 minutes. Um, I want to get in there and spend some time to decorate a whole array of cookies and kind of go deeper than what an elective is going to do. Um, but either one of those I think would be appropriate for somebody wanting to get into the, the cookie con instructor community. Yeah. Yeah. But they need to, they need to experience cookie con first and they need to have some other teaching experience, whether it be local at home, um, under their belt. Yeah. Certainly public speaking. I can't imagine the amount of questions and everything you guys get. <laughs> I love that. Yes. <laughs> um, what is some tips you have for people who are attending an add-on class or even down to the elective in the core classes? Do you have any bits of information or anything for somebody who is an attendee versus a teacher? Um, bring a snack for yourself. Okay. Um, just because they are four hour classes, unless you choose to do um, an all day class, mm -hmm. uh, it, you need to make sure you have a good night's sleep before coming into class. Um, come in and just be expect to have almost like the fire hose mentality of you're <laughs> going to have so much information coming at you to try to take in as much as you can um, mm -hmm. and experience as much as you can. Um, but definitely um, just be in the moment. Um, ask the questions in the classes. Um, and honestly, like think about where the instructor is coming from as far as oh, I wonder how they came up with that idea. I wonder if I can do that at home kind of thing. Um, and don't don't just leave what you learn in that classroom there. Mm -hmm. Like, especially if it's a technique kind of class, take that home, expound on it, develop it, to make it to become your own. Um, 
yeah, there, there's just so much, but definitely bring yourself a snack, bring a water bottle, <laughs> have plans for lunch. Like, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. Those add-on classes are typically four hours, correct? You said, and then an eight hour, it was, a, is that the all day? Those are the all-day all day ones, yeah, or eight hours. My goodness. Bless yes. your guys' hearts on that. You are amazing. And there's a lot of folks that do four add-on classes. They'll do four different ones. And so by the time the actual cookie con event comes along, um, mm-hmm. if they're not conditioned to go, go, go like that, they're just kind of melting. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Um, yeah. So if, if you're coming into cookie con and you don't have a whole lot of stamina, if you can afford to take an add-on class, definitely take an add-on class, but also kind of know what your body is able to do um, mm-hmm. and know what your stamina and your attention span is and maybe not take all four um, add-on classes to start. You know, maybe start with one or two um, and spread it out. So ease your way in. Yeah. Ease your way in. What is something that you wish you knew back then that you know now as not only an attendee, but then also as a teacher? Okay. Um, probably it might be easier for the, as a teacher, mm-hmm. um, plan for the worst and hope for the best. Um, definitely want to have all of your bases covered. Um, assume something is going to go wrong and have a plan B. Um, and it, you just, cause you never know what's going to come up. Um, here's an example, Ohio. Um, I had cordless airbrushes. I have little fans and stuff that we all use. And I only had one outlet to ha- access in the classroom. Um, so had oh I brought regular plug-in machines, airbrush machines, regular plug-in fans, I would have been really, really up the creek and having to run to Walmart and get extra extension cords and yep. hope that the fire marshal doesn't come in. Um, but in the meantime, you, you have to kind of plan for what's the worst that could happen and how am I going to adapt and, mm-hmm. and adapt quickly. Um, as an attendee, um, I don't know if I can give, give any idea. Um, I guess my best thing is just to, to do as much as you can, but then also know what your limitations are. Um, mm-hmm. It's real easy to, to drag yourself into the ground and then you're needing not just one day to recover, but you need like four or five days to recover because you probably drove yourself so tired that you got sick and then you have to take a couple extra days off of work. So Yes. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Where if you were in charge – Mike and Karen said, Amy, you pick the next cookie con location <laughs> besides your hometown. Where would you like to see cookie con go? Um, any place that I can drive to. Mm. So I drove to Ohio. Um, that was about an eight hour drive for me. Um, I'm driving to Orlando. I'm actually getting the auto train. Um, so I oh. get to take my car to an Amtrak auto train place in Virginia, Northern Virginia, and then my car and I go down to Orlando together. And actually Arlene Chua is riding with me too. So oh my gosh, how fun. We're on the same auto train. So we're pretty excited about catching up and actually having some together time without racing in between classes. Um, I didn't even know that was an option. Yeah. Well, there's only one. There's only one. Yeah. yeah. We have nothing um, out here in the West like that. (laughs) um, I've never been to Arizona. I've heard Mm. good things, but Mm -hmm. that means I have to ship things and yes. that's not fun. Um, but yeah, any, any place that I could drive to and I'm, I'm open to even spreading it over two days at this point, just so I don't have to ship things. Yeah. Oh, what is looking back on all of your cookie con experiences? Do you have any moment that you're just like, wow, this sticks out and is such a fond memory for you? Uh, Honestly, so many of the cookie cons have started to kind of meld together. Yeah. Um, obviously, me being the, the keynote speaker for the 10th one in Reno was fantastic. My husband was able to fly out with me and and having that time with him and the cookie community all at the same time um, mm-hmm. was fantastic. Anytime that he's been able to come with me because he loves these people too. <laughs> and he's not one of the husbands that he goes and plays golf or he goes and someplace. No, he's in the mix with it 
with me. Um, Aww. and he loves it. Um, times that I've been able to fly, cause I never used to fly, you know, it's, so being able to go to Reno the very first time, I'd never seen the mountains like that before. So do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It has opened up a lot of neat travel opportunities that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So I can't say that there's a favorite, favorite moment besides the, the keynote one. Um, but it's, it's given me some pretty awesome adventures. I love that. How do you stay energized to keep going year over year that you're just like, I need to keep coming back? What is it that pulls you? Oh, it's the people. Because mm-hmm. it's it's like a little family reunion every time I go back. Um, I've made connections with so many peoples over the years. Um, some don't do cookies anymore or some aren't as diehard about it as I am. Um, but being able to connect with you know, all my Canadian friends and all my friends from out on the West Coast. And and what's yeah. really neat is when we get to see each other in person again, it was like we were at CookieCon the week before mm. when it was actually a year or 18 months before. Um, the, that time doesn't doesn't matter that we were away. It You just, you pick up right where you left off. It's, it's awesome. I love that. Did you ever think looking back on your career as a teacher that this is where teaching would guide you to? <laughs> no, I, I never thought. I thought I was going to be a diehard forever teaching science in the middle school classroom. Um, and, but I, I can't, I can't deny that my education experience from back then didn't help be- yeah, yeah. make me become the teacher I am now. Um, I'm so much more organized than I ever would have been without all of that prior teaching experience. Um, so it, it's just, it's just neat how it's changed over time, how it's evolved over time. Yeah. I love that. I, I do like how sometimes our past journeys kind of bring us where we are now even though it wasn't the path we planned on, you're mm-hmm. like, wow, I didn't realize my past experiences really were preparing me for this adventure mm-hmm. that I'm embarking they sh- on. They shape who you are. Yeah. It's amazing. I love that. And for anybody listening, try and keep that in mind because if you're like, I am going to die hard, be a full-time cookier, that could be the goal, but it could lead you. Like I never thought I would be doing the cookie chat or getting to interview people and hearing more of the stories of the journeys versus creating the cookies. I get to do that on my business, but with this one, it's just amazing. I, the cookie world has evolved so much since I started. So I cannot imagine for you just yeah. what this has grown. It's, it is an entire community. Yes. Um, and I, I sometimes marvel at how different it is now compared mm-hmm. to what it was like back then. Um, and so, so much of it is still the same um, because you still have the the core of what a cookie is, you know, there's that, that relatable component, but then just seeing how people approach it differently. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the community factor, like you said, so it's pretty well. Where do you see your business going from here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're like, I'm here for the ride. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, as I mentioned earlier, I haven't done orders in quite some time. Um, stepping away from orders locally was what I needed to do mm-hmm. um, because I was getting pretty burnt out. Um, I love having the creative freedom to kind of make what I want to make um, when I want to make it. And so that's when doing the classes locally really afforded me that opportunity. Um, Mm -hmm. I'd love to continue doing local classes. There's a lot more cookie people these days that are doing classes. um, And not all cookie classes are the same. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I need to continue to try to make what I'm doing stand out from what other cookie or decorators are doing. Um, I don't know if I'll go back into orders or maybe I'll do like a pop-up kind of thing. I don't know. We'll say Um, I do have one online course and I want to expand that side of things a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, But we'll say, we'll say, I'm just kind of, I'm preparing for cookie con right now. (laughs) That's You're like, like, I'm in the trenches. Yes. I have two local classes, small ones next week. Um, and then I have two more other classes before cookie con, but 
it's everything right now is eat, sleep, breathe, cookie con and prepping for it. Gosh, man. What? Yeah. That's amazing. It's a lot. <laughs> Tell all of our followers as we wrap this up about your add-on class in Orlando, kind of what it's looking like. Do you have spots open for those that are kind of still trying to make decisions? Sell us on your class. All right. Um, well, first of all, I have a fantastic assistant to help mm -hmm. me this time. Um, it is Cynthia Raven from Sugar Chat Cookies. I've known oh. her for years and years. And um, so she's going to be my assistant in Orlando. Um, so my Wednesday classes, I have two. They're the same. Um, it's called Puppy Love. And it is a class that is all about um, our favorite four-legged creatures that bark and go wolf and and those kinds of things so it's a little dog and dog house and um the collar and a bowl of food and all kinds of things so they're cutesy cookies but there's still a lot of techniques that are mm -hmm. hidden in them um so it's those two classes and then on thursday of cookie con in orlando is meow mix so oh my gosh how cute cat versions of those classes so it's a little kitty cat and um what else is in that class like, i'm just so yeah and there's there's a, a cardboard box with little cat ears sticking out of the top and it, all kinds of other things there's a litter box cookie that we're gonna do yes a little oh, box. what um, skills and techniques are you hitting on those <laughs> um it's a lot of um Royal icing transfers, like how to create them differently, how to apply them differently, because it, it doesn't have to be just like a one little thing, like mm -hmm. the way that you can manipulate icing to make it do different things. Um, we're going to do a little bit of painting. We have some dry dusts. We have um, all kinds of other things. So I think these classes are great for anybody, um, beginners. Um, I do like to have people that have used icing before um i've had lots of students in the past at cookie con that have never touched an icing bag in their life wow i didn't know mm -hmm. that oh yeah yeah wow. and it's it's they've been able to make make out just fine um in their classes but it's it makes it a little bit easier on me mm -hmm. and them if they have a little bit of icing experience um but um yeah that's what we have i have a few spaces left um more so in the afternoon of each of those classes, but um, mm -hmm. there's a little bit left. So you not only get to have me, but then you also have experience with Cynthia Raven. She's she's pretty awesome. So I love that. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And is there anything we didn't hit on that you would love for anybody to know about CookieCon? Um, if you're on the fence about going um, mm -hmm. and if you're able to make the financial and time commitment, yep. just do it. Just do it. And if you do go, you get out of cookie con what you put into it. Don't mm. hide in your room. Don't be a wallflower. Just go and talk to people because they want to talk to you. I so. love that. Amy, thank you so much. Um, let us know again your handles. Are you Instagram only? Are you Facebook, oh, TikTok? No, I, I, I don't do TikTok because I'm too old for TikTok, <laughs> to be honest. TikTok no. and I aren't friends. No, no. no. Um, I do a uh, Facebook, um, it's cloud nine cookies and sweets. Um, mm -hmm. Instagram is Amy underscore cloud nine cookies. My website's cloud nine cookies.com. Um, and of course it's C L O U G H D nine, the number nine cookies. So, and we me. will have that everything linked down in the description. And then we will also have it all over our Instagram and social media. So thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. And Anybody who's going to Orlando, snag a picture with Miss Amy and tag us Yay. and bring her a Diet Coke or a margarita <laughs> or a coffee. So yes. thank you so much, Basic Thanks for Bakers. Me. Yeah, of course. We will see you next time.